So let's have a look at the following problem. We have a function that depends on u and v, and u and v themselves depend both on x and y. And we're asked to show that the following identity holds for these particular partial derivatives. So how do we prove that this identity holds? Well, obviously, we need to do some sort of partial differentiation here. But how do we do that? Well, if you look at our particular setup, we have a composition of functions. Okay, so u depends on x and y, v depends on x and y, and f depends on u and v. Now this is a prime example where you, when you see this composition to employ and apply the chain rule. So, we're going to apply the chain rule to find these two particular derivatives. Okay, so how do we apply the chain rule? And in particular, which chain rule will give us these kinds of partial derivatives? Well, sometimes this is confusing. The, uh, the application is not very difficult, but because there are so many different chain rules, we have to be very careful. And in my experience, the easiest way to determine the correct chain rule is to draw a diagram. And here's how we do it. You see, we start off with the original case W equals F. And now we know that F depends on U and V. Now, both U and V depend on two things themselves, X and Y. Okay, so this is what our basic diagram looks like. Now you may ask, how does that help us calculate these derivatives? Well, suppose we wanted to find dw dx. We start at the top and go down all those roads that lead to an x. So there's one road down here and another road down here. When we pass from letter to letter, we form a derivative. So Going down this path, we would go df du times du dx. And then there's another path to go down. So let's use this. So dw dx is df du times du dx plus the other branch df dv times dv dx. Okay, well, we're not sure what df du and df dv are because f isn't specified, but we do know the particular uh, format of u and v. So we can calculate du dx and dv dx. So du dx is just going to be 1. dv dx is just going to also be 1. So our dw dx now simplifies to this expression. Let's go through and find dw dy. Okay, so now we start up here 
and go down the roads that lead to a y. So it's going to be df du times du dy plus the other branch. df dv times dv dy. Similar to the case for dw dx, we can simplify these particular derivatives. If u is x plus y, what is dy dx? 1. And if v is x minus y, what will dv dy be? Minus 1. So we end up with something like this. Okay, so we're almost finished now. The left-hand side of our identity is these two partial derivatives multiplied together. So let's do that. Let's multiply these two by multiplying these particular expressions together. Okay, so it's just this times this. Okay, well, you can expand this out and you can see that we will obtain the right-hand side of our identity. So, we've proved what we wanted to prove. Now, as a general rule, I always like to draw these simple uh, diagrams. If you draw the diagram, carefully work through it, you'll never go wrong.